17 Republican attorneys general and 126 Republican members of the, members of the Congress actually, they actually signed on to a lawsuit filed by the state of Texas. That lawsuit asked the United States Supreme Court to reject the certified vote counts in Georgia, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. This legal maneuver was an effort by elected officials and one group of states to try to get the Supreme Court to wipe out the votes of more than 20 million Americans in other states and to hand the presidency to a candidate who lost the Electoral College, lost the popular vote, and lost each and every one of the states whose votes they were trying to reverse. It's a position so extreme, we've never seen it before. A position that refused to respect the will of the people, refused to respect the rule of law, and refused to honor our Constitution. Thankfully, a unanimous Supreme Court immediately and completely rejected this effort. The court sent a clear signal to President Trump that they would be no part of an unprecedented assault on our democracy. Every single avenue was made available to President Trump to contest the results. He took full advantage of each and every one of those avenues. President Trump was denied no course of action he wanted to take. He took his case to Republican governors and Republican Secretary of State, as he criticized many of them, to Republican state legislatures, to Republican-appointed judges at every level. And in a case decided after the Supreme Court's latest rejection, a judge appointed by President Trump wrote, wrote, quote, this court has allowed the plaintiff the chance to make his case, and he has lost on the merits, end of quote, lost on the merits. Even President Trump's own cybersecurity chief, overseeing our elections, said it was the most secure election in American history, and summarily was let go. Let me say it again. His own cybersecurity chief, overseeing this election, said it was the most secure in American history. You know, respecting the will of the people is at the heart of our democracy, even when we find those results hard to accept. But that's the obligation of those who've taken on a sworn duty to uphold the Constitution. Four years ago, when I was a sitting vice president of the United States, it was my responsibility to announce the tally of the Electoral College votes in the joint session of Congress that voted to elect Donald Trump. I did my job. And I'm pleased, but not surprised, by the number of my former Republican colleagues in the Senate who have acknowledged already the results of the Electoral College. I thank them. And I'm convinced we can work together for the good of the nation on many subjects. That's the duty owed to the people, to our Constitution, to our history. You know, in this battle for the soul of America, democracy prevailed. We, the people, voted. Faith in our institutions held. The integrity of our elections remains intact. And now it's time to turn the page, as we've done throughout our history, to unite, <clears throat> to heal. As I said in this campaign, I will be president for all Americans. <clears throat> I'll work just as hard for those of you who didn't vote for me as I will for those who did.